So this is the, the second ply. Oh shoot, my husband's home. <laughs> Weird light, but it's okay. <laughs> welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trisha if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. This is the channel where I document my fiber arts journey. So I make bats, I weave, I spin, I dye stuff a lot. I have a shop where I, I dye, sell my dyed stuff and my bats. Oh, I knit, I crochet, I can crochet. I don't crochet very often, isn't that weird? But I can crochet. I guess that's about it. Did I say spin? Yes. Occasionally I show other crafty things I do. Donkey's not liking the hot weather. I didn't expect that. I thought he would probably really like it, but it's cool. He's down on our bed taking a nap, but Luther just jumped up. So today I'm going to film a Q&A, but I'm going to be spinning this braid from Dancing Skies Fiber Arts that came in, I think it was the March, I think it was the March um, Paradise package. But this is not the Q&A. This is actually because I'm going to spin this in a gradient and a lot of you guys had questions. Um, this is one of those chained braids. Nothing wrong with it, I'm just telling you. So if you start at the correct end, which I think is gonna be this one, yep, you can just unchain it like that. Pretty easy, that's how you start. And then I'm gonna divide this into three sections because I'm going to do a three ply gradient. I'm going to do my best to do like third, a third, a third, but you know, you can only control it so much. So you just got to be okay with it. I'm just trying to like do it by feel a little bit. All right. Wish me luck. And I will weigh them and we'll see how close I came. I have a feeling this one's not gonna be a third. They're supposed to be four ounce braids. I'm gonna actually, there we go. Now I feel like I have too much, but that's okay. Oh, I definitely have too much. <sighs> okay. All right, so that's the first one. Get my scale. 1.6 ounces. So that's more than a third, isn't it? because it should be 1.3. We're gonna divide the rest in half. All right, so let's see, how close are we? It should be 2.4 left. So if we had 1.2, that would have been exactly in half. It is, uh-oh, 1.6 again. How do we do that? Maybe these are a little bit more than four ounces. Hey. Okay, that one's 1 1.2. So these are a little more than four ounces. Nice. Ideally, we would take a little bit, I guess off the one that's 1 1.6, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a little bit off of this one. They're so close, I'm tempted to leave them. Okay, I'm literally gonna take this much off, add it to the one that's 1.2 and hope I come out closer, okay? So one of these I'm gonna take and spin it just like this, end to end, okay? One section. This one I'm gonna split into two sections. I don't really care if they're equal. Some people think it, you know, try to make it equal. I don't really care. So this is the other section. Sorry, the other ply, let's say. Um, and I'm gonna leave them just like this because I want them to be in the same order. So this is one ply. They're downstairs barking. This is the second ply. And then the third ply, I am gonna divide this one into three sections. 
It doesn't have to be one, two, and three. It can be any way you want it to be. Amy's sweaty. <laughs> This is the end of this braid and someone who is currently sleeping in a sunbeam tore it up while I was, gosh, John and I took off somewhere. I can't remember where we went this weekend. Um, so I'm just going to kind of like pull this apart and then put it in line best I can, but he really like drooled on it, kind of pulled it apart. I'll just do my best. Not much else I can do, right? <laughs> All right, this is the longest repeat, just one time through. This is the second longest, two times through the braid. And this is the one with three times through, and then the end is what Donkey chewed up. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that I think he ate some because that one's a little bit shorter. But that's okay, we'll finagle these around so we have a three ply all the way through. All right, here's what's left for the second bobbin. I'm about to start applying. You know, it looks more even now than it did before, which is weird. But I'm hoping I won't come out too far off. We'll just see what happens. And then I'll talk to you guys about how I like use the ends of the bobbins Inevitably, all your singles are not the same length. So when I finished uh, the first bobbin, the shortest bobbin was empty, I actually took the bobbin that had more on it and wound it on my hand turkey hand style so I could use that for two of the three plies that I had left and continue to get a barber pole. All right, I broke that strand to wind it and it was on like the kind of peach color. So I'm actually gonna just connect it with the same color. This is exactly where I broke it. It's just too hard to wind if you leave it connected to the strand cause you have to go like around and around the strand. It's pain. So uh, I just licked my fingers. <laughs> I'm going to double this up just a little bit and then felt it together just a hair. So it just to keep it the ends in. When it gets all applied, it just kind of disappears. I don't know how to explain that part, but so this is the one that I broke to wind onto my hand, turkey hand. We're gonna advance it just a bit. Hang on. Okay. 
Make sure it's smooth in there. Okay. And now I'm gonna break the ply that we actually first ran out of. The one that caused all this nonsense, okay? And I'm gonna attach that to the other side of my turkey hand, my Andean plying wrap. Elizabeth pointed out that I always say turkey hand now and I had not even really realized it. <laughs> but, so we're gonna attach these two together. And so now, the one, the first one that ended, hang on, I'm gonna advance it again a little bit. Okay, so now, one of the ends of my Andean ply replaced the bobbin, the first bobbin that we finished, and it all actually just got attached to itself as well. Hang on, I'm just trying to get myself organized over here with my hand because there we go. So now I still have the biggest bobbin, the one that had the most on it, and the rest is making two strands. So we're just gonna apply those three together. Till we come to the end of the one that I wrapped on my hand. This is always a little slower, but you know, you're just trying to use up what's left on your bobbin, so it usually doesn't take very long to do. Even though it's slow, there's usually not a ton of length involved. This will change the order of your gradient a little bit, but it's not noticeable at all, and it continues the look of the barber pole. Once you start chain plying, it's not a bad thing, but it does look quite a bit different. Like you can really see the difference in those yarns, the way they look. So this will make it look more barber pulley and it will give you the shortest amount that is chain plied. As soon as we switch to chain plying, it's going to look different. If it's a small amount in a project, for me, it doesn't bother me too much as long as it's a pretty small amount. So I try to make the chain plied end as small as possible. But if you don't mind it or you kind of like it that way, there's totally nothing wrong with it. So you do your thing. Don't waste your singles. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Whenever I'm doing like a barber pole effect with a bunch of colors, especially ones I didn't dye, but sometimes even with ones that I dyed myself, I end up seeing color combinations and thinking, oh, I love that, I'm gonna dye that. It happens every single time I do it. When you use this technique for a three ply and then you have what's left that you are going to chain ply, some people do it, some people don't. Again, no right and wrong. It's really handy because it leaves you with a loop to start chaining. So I'm gonna chain now starting with this loop. You probably won't be able to see my whole hands and everything, but you can always go and look at my chain plying video to see that. This loop that's left at the end of the Andean plying, that's how it always works with the end of your Andean plying. You've got a, like a loop at the end. I just reach through and start chaining with the one bobbin that's left. Okay, we're all done. So I'm gonna go attach this and wind it to the other hank. See how different it looks when you chain ply it? The same colors usually end up together. And then this is the part that was still um, barber pole. I'm gonna put this all in one hank so I am just attaching the new one. And I made a note, you guys asked recently how I count yardage on this. So it's two yards, it makes a two yard loop. And then what I do is count my like starting yardage. And then when, after I wash it and can measure it again, I account for shrinkage by percentage at that point. So like if I wash it and it bounces back 20% smaller, then I know that my yardage is actually 20% less. I just take it in, into account when I'm trying to pick a project. So, and I count. My note says that I had 135 wraps with the first bobbin, so I'm just gonna keep counting. I 
I had 236 wraps, so that means 472, is that right, 472? Yeah, 472 yards, so I use those bracelets, we all know already, to mark the number of yards, and again, I'll just account for shrinkage later. I use these because you can wash them and the ink does not come off and they don't like nothing happens to them they are made for people to wear at like water parks and resorts and stuff so get them wet and whatever let me wind it up and we'll get some last looks and then we'll be done it's really pretty it's so much pinker than I thought it was gonna be. I don't know, sometimes you know, certain colors just kinda like take over. Thanks for joining me while I create this three-ply fractal yarn. I will see you soon. Thanks, I love you, bye.